Today on Gamer's Couch, Fabled Fruit. Hello, welcome Hello. to the third Advent Gamer's Couch. It's going to be very heavy on vitamin C and um, vitamin B and A and all the numbers because we're playing Fabled all the, Fruit. All the numbers like A, B, C. E, well, D is not in the fruit. E is in the fruit. A, C, E, And all B. of those are not numbers. But that's a great start already. But there are numbers somewhere. Uh, the, well, I, in I, algebra, you calculate with I letters, wanna, don't you? I want to put forward a disclaimer, because I'm pretty sure this will happen during talking about this game. So you're just ready for it. Uh, the game is called Fabled Fruit in English, and uh, the German version is called Fabelsaft, which technically translates to Fabled Juice. So, if you hear us say Fabled Juice, and I'm not looking at anyone in particular, who might be saying Fabled Juice all the time. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to. That is because, well, Things. The game is actually called that way. But since yeah. this is a, a Friedemann Friese game, uh, it has to well live up to a certain naming scheme, uh, in particular that it has uh, like two Fs in there, or uh, at least yeah. more as many Fs as possible, which is why it's called Fabled Fruit, although you're technically making juice. Yes. Another disclaimer, um, since this is kind of a campaign E game, if you don't want to be spoiled uh, regarding the locations that come up, we are currently at location number 13, that's the highest number, if you haven't played this far or not at all and don't want to be spoiled at all on what the locations do but just want to know what we think about the game, well, hop to the likes and dislikes section. In the description box below, there is a time code on when that section starts and when you're good to go when it comes to the spoilers. And But before you do that, let me give you at least yeah. some, some basic... We, we say now and idea. then you go, all right? Yeah. By the way, I am uh, registered a couple of new subscribers this week, so if you don't know this lovely creature next to me, you probably are familiar with this face. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinselgeschichten and I'm owner of this channel and this is my sweet husband Daniel who's just well as board game nerdy as I am so we have this show well every week. So now you can go ahead general rules and gameplay and then we say when you know. Okay so in Fabled Fruit, you are trying to make uh, the most delicious juice all out of those Fabled Fruits. And um, essentially, this is an action selection and set collection game. Now that we got the technicalities out. Um, so this game is for two to five players. It is essentially, uh, well, as I said, an action selection game. But you're trying to collect sets of these fruit cards which probably I should hold into the other camera, which probably uh, also are. We will be seeing them soon. Yeah, soon enough, because you with the spoilers, you now, please... No, no, no. no. Well, then don't show the cards on the second camera. Don't make me switch to the other camera. It's, those cards are in German, and I'm, I'm confident that you can... What if there's German away, people? Then... <laughs> Go, Shit. <laughs> go away, German people. No, don't. Don't listen to him. He's the dark part of the force. Right? Yeah, yeah. That, seems, that seems about right. So there's five different fruits in, in the game. Uh, the strawberry, the banana, the blueberry, the ananas. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, the... Uh, pineapple. The pineapple. That was the first German lesson of the day. And the coconut. And it's uh, grapes. It's not blueberries, but... Is it grapes? Yeah, it's oh, grapes. Oh, yeah. I'm it's looking, blue. Looking, it's look, a fruit. Looking at the second screen of the camera to look at my cards is probably not the best idea. So, uh, you will be gathering these cards uh, over the course of the game, keeping them on hand, and your job is to, well, purchase uh, fruit juice uh, out of them. And um, I 
actually, let's let's take Shall one of the. Uh, take one of the. You wanted to show the backs. No, I or? have to. I actually have now to show some of the locations. So that wasn't very clever. The don't look at the locations kind of thing. But well, whatever. You decide if you want to be spoiled or not. No, uh, it's, it, it. Okay, yeah. look, look. This whatever. Is, this is this is a very, a very quick aside. I just wanna wanna show you some how what these cards look like. And uh, let me pick. Uh, uh, let's go with seven and eight. So these are very early on location cards. Uh, so these are the the. Oh, well, the juice cards or the action cards, because they kind of work as doubles. As you'll see, there's always 24 of these cards out. And um, essentially, it's usually 9, 10, 11 stacks of cards, because some of these are, well, they're on or are, they have duplicates there. So what you do on your turn is uh, you have a, a little, uh, well, animal meeple. I have the penguin. Sarah has the... The turtle! The turtle. Uh, on your turn, you are placing one of these guys on one of these card stacks and then use the ability that's on the card. And usually these abilities relate to draw cards from the stack, uh, steal cards from another player, or... Exchange things mm -hmm. with the other player? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, there's again. Again, we don't want to spoil some no. some of the stuff that's up there, but you get the idea. It's either you can get new cards coming from the stack if that's empty, just reshuffle. And uh, to buy these juices, they have a cost down here, uh, which you have to pay. So, uh, it, what you do there is you go to that space and spend the fruits that are down here, and then you claim that card, which then leads to a new card coming into the game. So this game has a stack of cards uh, right next to it and this is actually not the full stack because there's more there's uh, there's goes, what, even more than there's, there's another one of that. those in in there so this is uh, is essentially um a game where you progress with actions and and stuff that that is available in, i'm gonna in shuffle the fruits into the fruits mm -hmm. so that we're ready to play do you need that yes <gasps> And you you uh, select those things, try try to get the juice, and uh, now that Sarah kind of threw me entirely off, I, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We just have to reshoot the video or something. No, like that. it's all real, folks. Yeah. I heard you all giggle about those failings of ours. So. As I said, you, you move on that, you take either the action or you purchase the card, and when a card is gone, you just draw the new card. If that new card from the stack is a, a kind of a new type of card or a new number, you just open up a new uh, well selection stack on the board. So that's why I said you sometimes have nine, sometimes a couple of more stacks available there, depending on how many uh, how many stacks are emptied out, how many cards are there. Uh, the only constant here being that it is always 24 cards in front of you. And that is also later on, as you'll see, how you save the game progress and continue afterwards. Because this is, I think it says legacy game, but it's more of a, there's an overall progression in between plays, uh, but you can easily reset that. So it's not a legacy game in terms of you destroy game equipment and then it's legacy. Uh, it is more of a, there's a st uh, an overall meta state um, in this. So um, I think I talked about most of the stuff that uh, that is available there. Um, and it is as simple. There's only one uh, or a couple of other rules. If you move your guy to a space where other players are standing already, or let's be more precise, where other of these figurines are standing, um, then you have to pay one of your fruits from hand to each uh, well, figurine slash player that is available there. Um, or to use the, the action. So you're kind of encouraged to move to different spaces or to spaces that are not occupied uh, yet. Although obviously some of these spaces are more useful than others. Um, so some of the starting spaces are draw up to three cards, 
which is super useful if you have no fruits on hand because it allows you to draw three cards. Another one just says draw two cards, no matter how many fruits you have on hand. And as I said, you don't have any hand limit. Um, then uh, Sarah hinted at there's uh, there's cards where you get to take fruits uh, from other players. Well, I think in the starting setup there's even one that says draw one card, then uh, trade uh, three cards with another player, uh, and they have to get three cards back, but you get to decide which ones uh, those are. Um, and uh, at the end of each round, so the game ends depending on the player number. If we're playing for, with two players, as we are right now, it ends when someone has uh, made five juices, so claimed five juice cards. So that's a, a win. And you could just keep on playing then with the next round, and you just keep the cards in front of you. If you're done with your game session, all you have to do is well, um, pick up those 24 cards and either put them into a, a small bag, and the game graciously comes with enough bags to put them away, or the other way is you take your, uh, your stack of cards and put them on in the numerically correct order. So if this is the 13, I would put more 13s on here than 12. And, and so on and uh, then at the start of the next game all you have to remember is to pick the top 24 cards of that stack and uh, that lets you recreate um, your play environment and you can just keep going and if that is not enough the manual even has a small little notes section where you can write down which cards you have although I think that is uh, probably unnecessary um, the game has uh, quite a lot of text on it, so uh, apologies for this being the German version, but we are obviously trying to, to tell you what the cards are doing. It's not super complicated, but um, if you don't speak German, you may want to try to find a version with your native language on, on there. Um, it, as I said, it's, it's not uh, terribly difficult. In fact, the game comes with a little reference manual that explains to you what every single card is doing. Um, and I think the, uh, the interesting appeal to this is that obviously with new cards or new type of locations coming into play, there's uh, new either new game mechanics introduced or uh, existing game mechanics get twisted a little bit and make things uh, more interesting. Um, Although that being said, at the core, this game always stays the set collection and buy the juice with the cards on hand kind of game. Uh, the only effect that these locations have are to how do you gather fruit cards and uh, how to use them optimally with some yeah, additional stuff going on, but nothing too complicated. Uh, looking at the box, the game says it's f for eight year olders and older guys, which I think is uh, correct, and uh, a, a game round is about 25 minutes, which is also correct. Yeah. It might be a little might be dependent on how many players you yeah. have and uh, how crowded the the location space is mm -hmm. uh, going going to get for for everyone, but. Um, yeah, that's uh, essentially uh, you are trying to grab fruit and make juice, and that is uh, the game. And Shall we play a round up to who has three juices first? How's ruling that just to not make it look too think, long? I think we just do two, three turns and then talk about it because I. But then we ha once we uh, stop recording, we got to finish the game because I don't want to reset for this location. Yeah, we we'll, so. we'll just do one juice and don't have to reset it then. Okay. Um, so if oh, something, if you don't really want to know anything about the location cards, uh, you can go. now go directly to our likes and and dislikes stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, here us talking about if we like or dislike the game, and uh, for everybody else who doesn't care that much and or has played. Trust me, it's it's not that big of a thing. It's not like a time story. There's no story in this game. It's just if you want to be surprised by the game yeah. mechanics. I'm uh, having the starter sheep. So with the two-player game, um, it uh, says whomever has the sheep or another of the cutie animals that is not your player token is the starting player. So Ava I am. Available player tokens are the elephant. The giraffe, the 
snake. Pangwang. The penguin. <laughs> and, and the turtle. And, and the starter sheep. And the sheep and uh, whoever. Yeah, I'm gonna sheep. Uh, so, first one. I want to go here and take all fruits of one kind from the market. This section here, by the way, yeah, is we... the market that we didn't spoil earlier. And I want to take the pineapple. Yeah, so uh, something I haven't explained yet, the, the market is a set of open fruit carts uh, that get modified by, well, actions we we take here. So Sarah's car uh, action allowed her to take all uh, of the same kind. Um, there's another card here that will replenish the market or force me to do something with it. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'll go to uh, this card uh, because uh, now, since Sarah has more cards than me, this allows me to uh, pick two cards uh, from her hand and... Oh, you want to pick? No. Oh. I have to give you, not you yes. pick. Yeah, that's fine. And you draw a card. So this I says, card, uh, right. I, I get to pick another player. She, well, Sarah in this case has to give me two cards and draws yeah. up two more cards. I did. I'm going to go here and I do have... Three pineapple and a banana, which is enough. This is, by the way, the wild card, so you can take any fruit. And the Nashorn, <laughs> which is a German word for Nashorn. Rhino, right? Is yes. It? For the rhino, he he comes yeah. to me. So she she puts her fruit cards away. Now, now what would happen is uh, we uh, put this card pile is going to be here. from from the from our uh, uh, card pile. We put out the next card, and in this case, the thirteen is already here, and just put it there. If this would be the uh, four, no, number fourteen card, we would just open up a new set of cards, and uh, obviously at some point, for example, the seven card, there's only one here. If the next one claims this, then that is gone. Uh, although you are not forced to take them by order so I could go to the nine and uh, it's, this is also the last one and if I have the correct fruit I can do that. Uh, as Sarah already said those uh, uh, smoothie icons are there to uh, uh, as a wild card so you can spend any kind of fruit uh, for, for that. Um, uh, just to give you an, an idea of what types of uh, uh, interactions are here, for example, the, uh, this turtle says uh, you will flip up uh, fruit cards uh, as long, until you either say stop and then take all the fruit cards or uh, if you flipped up a card that you already flipped up. So um, typically for our luck, it's like first card, strawberry, second card, strawberry. Damn it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that I get cursed <clears throat> that because I did shuffle. That's uh, that's typically never our, happened. Our luck. Mm -hmm. uh, other things are like uh, you know, give two pineapples away uh, and or well discard two pineapples and then draw five fruits, which is uh, pretty <laughs> useful. Um, and uh, as you may already see, um, at least that's the feeling I got so far. The starter cards are tend to be a little bit cheaper to yes. purchase than the cards later on. Um, as far as I know, there's no difference in in rarity. So one of the fruits is not rarer than the other. You just no, have to figure out. They're all the same, at least for okay. these yeah. fruits. Picking, picking up them. And, well, the game, as I said, has some, some more tricks up its sleeve. If you open up the game, you notice there's uh, a seventh guy here, which is not a player, the, the little monkey. Um, and then there's uh, other cards and, and tokens that, uh, that uh, come with this uh, that also have, uh, well, other things. Uh, whenever a card uh, or a new card comes out, it's worth taking a quick glance at the reference manual because that essentially says uh, this card is now a card that introduces the market and here's how the market works and uh, so on for all the other cards, uh, making it actually quite, quite simple. That being said, um, I think this game is really fastly played, which I think brings us now to likes and dislikes. Likes and dislikes. Welcome back, everybody that skipped the short play round that we had. I won, uh, but we uh, house ruled on how many juices we had mm -hmm. to have. Just one. Who got the first juice? I did. So, yeah, let's, let's talk about likes and dislikes. Um... I really like this game because it's 
something that I'm very sure we can play with our parents or our niece and nephew in a couple of years once they learned how to read. It's super simple to play and it's not getting old in regards to having the exact same cards on the table all the time like you very often do with other card games. Um, there's enough variation in there to even if you have played it through again you just start over uh, maybe with another set of players and uh, play again and uh, other cards will be bought earlier in this game than in that game so it changes up the gameplay a bit and since they, the game itself comes with so many cards, it takes you a while until you get through all of them and have one round uh, finished there. So it's not going to get boring. But still, it's simple enough that you can have a conversation while you play or you can tease each other or whatever. Um, it's It's not a super involved game where you have to be uh, really there at the table and uh, know what to do and not miss anything. There's there's hardly, at least so far, I found um, a time that you are stuck and can't do anything. I'm very sure uh, there's possibility for that I later in the I game, maybe. So. But... Yeah, even, even so even, far, no. Even if you, uh, so uh, the the mechanic that might prevent you from going somewhere um, actually doesn't quite. So if you go to a space that has someone else on there, you, as I said, have to give them a fruit uh, to pay them uh, and then use the card action. Um, but if you don't have any fruits on hand, you don't have to give them a fruit. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there's... essentially there is nothing that is stopping you from taking a certain action at some point. It yeah. might not be super useful for getting getting your juices, but yeah, but yeah, you can since you don't have a hand limit, you can always collect yeah, for yeah. future turns. But I really liked it, and while it's not your turn, you can admire the gorgeous Which, and so and cute. Cute, cute artwork. So I'm, what I'm going to show you now are the first six locations. So this is essentially the first when round open. when you open up the, the game. Just to give you an idea what the, yeah. what the artwork is yeah. looking like. It's and very cute. Um, I like the, the color schemes, the animals, the cutesy, cartoony way. Um, like I said, it's a very simple game. And I like that the locations are the bigger cards that we personally know from Love Letter because the German version comes with the big cards. Um, and the fruit cards are not the tiny ones that you find very often in the Fantasy Flight games that are just too tiny for, it's especially no, not, for not him. children cards. Yeah, it, this is a nice size to, well have them on the hand and one thing that i particularly am very happy about is you can see the icons no matter like on the top no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed however you uh, mm -hmm. shuffle your cards this is something that i personally struggle with every time that cards are made for right-handed people only and i'm very i'm very appreciative of the card designer um well done thank you it's very mm -hmm. simple i know but i'm very happy about that <coughs> and i came up with a pun i want to warn you i came up with a pun mm -hmm. um when it comes to the rating so just please don't talk over me when we rate but for now i'm done with my thoughts i pass okay the, the it's yours but i'm just warning you because i i usually don't I, have I, puns i thought you you were more warning me because i'm of the brain freeze i might get for, no for i pun. think it's actually pretty cute what okay. i came up with okay. but well you you'll be the judge in a couple of minutes oh so uh, i i think that uh, if you stayed with us uh, until now um, i also like this game that is quite obvious i uh, i like the the function that this game takes in our library because this is a game for two to five players it is very short to play and you can mm. join in almost well not in a in a running session but uh, you even though it has this ongoing development over the game nobody is tied down to that so this is essentially the the perfect game to play 
while you're waiting for your group together or as uh, as Sarah said uh, if you just have a, a smaller group of people or don't want to play something really heavy you just want to have a, a nice evening with a couple of drinks and uh, play something uh, while not thinking too hard uh, but on the other hand it is actually quite competitive there's uh, there's some cards in there where you think so you're taking away my fruit, friend. <laughs> um, friend me. <laughs> and uh, there's there's uh, the interaction that is uh, in in here is uh, well obviously all about stealing stuff or exchanging stuff or messing things up and then or buying off a card and then someone else cannot buy it and. So there is some death here, uh, or not not just some. There is actually quite a lot of death in, in there if you want it to be there. But you could also just say, "Hey, this is a, a nice little side game we we are playing while yeah. we're doing something else." So uh, that that versatility, um, I think, uh, makes it worth to th think about picking it up maybe for your collection um, and. Uh, I would say, apart from the timing issue, uh, uh, well, the, it's not an issue, but uh, apart from how long the game takes, uh, there's no scaling problem uh, really in here um, because uh, essentially you always have the same amount of cards out. Uh, yes, it may fluctuate in, in terms of what actions are available, but it's, after all, it's not that yeah. really important or that uh, yeah. terrible if something goes away. Um, so yeah, it, it is nice to play with three, with four, with five, and also with two. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we played it with all the different kinds of numbers, but we're gonna talk about the and, experiences. And the uh, um, I th I think that that it's so quick to play while also retaining some persistence over uh, consecutive game gameplays makes it just interesting mm -hmm. enough to um, yeah give it a look. Um, well, uh, I just. I uh, thought this would be a perfect game. Well, there's... Um, if you're a couple and you don't have very many people to play games with, uh, we know some folks that, well, just don't have any board game players in their um, area where they live. So this is a perfect game, though it says two to five, which is not having just the two-player version, but like the full two-player game. And you can make it like um, um, a campaign or a tournament throughout the year for uh, as long as you play the game, how many wins does everybody have? And depending on how much, you can have a tiny little mm -hmm. uh, gift or whatever at the end. You, you can. This is a game that uh, you can a, play. A, that, a bottle of juice, maybe. Yeah, like the gin juice. Maybe, I really like the gin fruits. Maybe, maybe, maybe recently. I was so. about to say maybe it's a fermented fruit in, mm -hmm. the, in this regard. So yeah. you you can do something with that, which is nice, especially for couples when you can have a game that you play over and over and over, or continue to play throughout the year. And uh, if it's a competitive game, you you make it a tournament, and the winner at the end of the year gets something sweet or something nice, something cute, mm -hmm. whatever it is that the person likes. So just saying for all of you married couples <laughs> or maybe other kinds of couples that are unmarried, whatever. And, and, and I think wow. if you're I think if you're looking for something to pick up maybe as a present for, for Christmas, this is probably a really good thing yeah. to do. Um not just because it's a smaller game, it's very easy to pick up and very light to play, but also because it's uh, the theme is very cute, it's family friendly. And uh, I think, as I said, the versatility of being able to play in almost any configuration between two and five players. Um, actually, I the only thing that limits you playing it with more would be the, the meeples available. I don't think, or I... I'm not sure if there's some some real gameplay limitation that would prevent you from playing with more, but I think five is already stretching it because then you have to wait quite some time until it's your turn. Uh, but this would be probably really good to bring on on the Christmas holiday to mm -hmm. play with your family, or as I said, while waiting for the rest of the family to arrive because that that weird uncle is always too late or and uh, stuff like this. Yeah, shall we raid? Now, you want to do yeah. the pun? Are you yeah. sure? 
Yeah, um, I, you have to translate my rating. Um, I'm saying Fabelsaft is fabelhaft. Now we have to translate it to that's the thumb. A, that's not a pun. It is. It's it's a joke thing. It's cute. It, it's a wordplay thing. It doesn't work in English. <laughs> Just works in German. That's, so let me translate that to you with another German word you are familiar with because probably you have some some chocolate bars. Uh, what Sarah's trying to convey to you is that fabled fruit is wunderbar. Um, or Wonderful or great, awesome. Something like that, yes. Yeah. Which translate to the thumbs up. And but I thought... For me, the same. I, I very much like this. You um, didn't like my rating. I was so proud that I remember. Because fabelhaft is not a word that we... That is very modern. It's more of the... It, it's it's not used very often. We use other words. Meanwhile... No, there's to, actually to the, 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 the correct the correct translation would be that uh, fabelhaft is fabled, uh, mm -hmm. but in terms of um, uh, that is uh, so awesome that there it it it's seems magical. to be either coming out of a fable or that it is a base for a fable. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, fable is the word that you. Yeah, uh, but but it doesn't work in English because yeah. it's already called fabled fruit. And we're not you, but we don't use fabelhaft when we say, "Oh, this is fabelhaft," then we say, "Oh, this is awesome." Yeah, this is what we mean. Weird you know? quirks of the German language. So you've been probably yeah. <laughs> sick of us educating you already. So sorry it's about that. But an, I thought, it's not an education if you just don't listen. Yeah, I thought it would be funny. That I never come up with. Um, things that rhyme and are true for game names. So I thought, anyway, let's talk about funny stories and experiences. <laughs> and, and if you if you think that I'm that I'm I'm a little bit weird because I'm looking always behind the camera. Uh, in the spirit of this game name, there's a fat fly freezing at the window, um, which uh, <laughs> is uh, kind of distracting. Uh, Look at me. It's, it's uh, uh, also distracting. It's yeah. also, also it's winter and it's cold, so I'm really surprised that there's still a fly around outside. Mm, maybe, it's probably frozen to the maybe jalousy. I was about to say, maybe it's Jeff Goldblum's uh, character out of the fly who's still living outside. And Who knows? We're you have, you, have, you haven't seen that because it's a scary no, movie. I kind no, of. I don't like scary movies. Anyway, funny stories and experiences. So we played, We you've seen it at Spiel. And we had quite heard quite a bit of buzz around it, but you didn't well, buy it at Spiel. It's a, it's a, it's a Friedemann Friese yeah, Spiel. So, uh, so, of course, you always have the buzz. Chances, chances are that it has at least uh, is something interesting going on in in there. And when we were at Essen, um, it I think it so oh, the English version sold out. I think, and I was thinking about picking it up, but <laughs> I think due to weight constraints. Uh, uh, as my arms were getting longer and longer, I yeah, he was kind of like the orang utan. I I I didn't. Um, and uh, then we later played this. We played it at, at BGG Con uh, with a, three, four, and five, and two. We just played it yeah, once yeah. we got it at home. But I really enjoyed it, and it I saw it quite often at the table at BGG Con. So people really played it. They were. Um, enjoying it a lot and that was the point where I said okay maybe let's give it a try because yeah. um, well we I just have played one other Freedom and Freezer game and that was more of a game designer game and not that a game is, game that is a so, really really I, I don't want to say it's a, that is a bad entry into the world of Freedom and Freezer no, games no but I, I knew from Joe he was saying oh I don't remember the name of the game that he really really liked from Funkenschlag uh, Probably so it's that, pro it's but he true. said, "Oh, five oh four is not what he usually does. This is the game designer mm -hmm. game, and I get mm -hmm. it, but I couldn't. It's it's um, it's like uh, I discovered the designer now with this game, and I couldn't have I, I didn't have any reference beforehand other than seeing him with his crazy awesome colored hair every year at Spiel. So 
I didn't have any connection with his kind of games, but um, having played it at uh, BGGCon and now at home, I'm wondering maybe over the next couple of years we might add another game that is maybe an older one or whatever yeah, he's sure. going to come up with because <coughs> I like the lightness of mm -hmm. this game and I assume that um, all of his other games mm -hmm. except Five of Four are maybe on the lighter no. part, the family game, no? Aren't they? I don't know. Not are anywhere. they gamer games? Yes. Okay. So this is this is almost like a, this is no this is a, a, I think a, almost a, a kids game he he made or a, okay. a, a very family friendly game. so uh, Funkenschlag is also they are family games but they're obviously more complex uh, mm. uh, in in things uh, I think um, the the card game for Funkenschlag that just came out uh, this year uh, might also be on the on the simpler side but. Um, I I mean he he is certainly a very creative designer and I while we haven't made a video I think about five or four no, uh, I I do like it for what it tries to mm -hmm. do but it's certainly I, at least for us it's not a game that hits the table very often because it's something like um, I don't want to compare it to an art house movie but it's almost like something that you have to plan on uh, yeah, playing or, or getting would, into I would almost say this is more a tool than a game meaning it's a tool to get you into the creative process of designing maybe parts of your own board game or other things yeah, but it's not a board game board game like concept it's not a board game board game it's well. I, 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 would, I would argue that concept is also not a board game. No, no, no. Like game. I said, it's, it's, those two games are not board game board games. They're they are more of a tool or a thing that helps you creating mm -hmm. other things. So they are not. Yeah. It sounds so weird. Board games, you know, but <laughs> yeah. they are fine for that. The, so. Not the, really the hipster description. Yeah, yes. um, I'm sorry, folks, but yeah. We we need to make new words. Oh, also, also you German again. I know. What did I say? Yeah, this is. Uh, mm. Oh yeah, is... this is the thing. But anyway, I I enjoyed all of the plays that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, we played it three or four rounds at at home. Now we're gonna finish this one, yeah. maybe if I'm nice. Um, but yeah, it's just very enjoyable to. Yeah. It is. It. It's I, cute. I also like that this is almost um, an exercise in streamlining uh, a legacy game, if if that makes any, any sense uh, to to you. So this does have the feel of there's something changing uh, or ever changing from play, play to play, even though this is very limited. There's uh, obviously if you're playing something like Pandemic Legacy, there's some huge changes to rules going on or new entirely new concepts introduced. Uh, this isn't as broad, but then again, this is a much smaller release, yeah. uh, a smaller game also. Uh, it I don't think it has to do that. But it plays on that feeling you get from being excited. Ooh, there's a new card coming mm -hmm. up soon. I what wonder it what do? it what it'll do. And I think yeah. it does that pretty well. Yeah. Um, and uh, with fifty nine different cards being available, there's plenty of ooh, what's coming next uh, feeling there. Yeah. And, and I I like that you don't have to have the same gaming group at the table to yes. to continue play this game. Um, this is actually one of the the most appealing things about this campaign or legacy style. You can game just you can play just play where, wherever, yeah. and nobody is missing out on something yeah. if they haven't if, seen a card beforehand. Because yeah. after all, it's just one of those cards that lets you get some fruit. fruit. And yeah, and it's like juicing in the morning. And I get him to well accept fruits. Very easily, without me begging, oh, honey, can you didn't have any fresh fruit today. Can you please eat one piece? <laughs> we now want to switch, switch the topic to yeah. some unhealthy stuff. Unhealthy as in advent calendar? 
Oh, I thought non non juicy. Non juicy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think we're done with experiences. Anything that I missed? No, I, no? I think so. I, I think we're good. Time. There's just a little little hint from me, the expert uh, setting upper. Um, the first time we we played played this, um, I got handed the fruit cards with the, the words "shuffle those" mm. and uh, "prepare the rest." And I I understood "shuffle those" and also the rest. So I shuffled the location cards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good news. Of fun. Good news is that they are numbered on the back, so you can reorder them uh, again. But. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> It was don't, very funny. Don't be mean. Totally forgot that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ruin the game for someone else. <laughs> it wasn't ruined. It just took a little longer. They, they were surprised when yeah. suddenly a card came up that was way higher than... Yeah. Well. So, uh, this is box number three for your advent calendar. You're Yay. allowed to open it I, now. I am I am the excited. While I am telling the folks uh, what's going to come up next First, week. Let, let me take a look at this depiction of a duck. How, how do you know that it's a duck? Because... There's a theme. There's a theme. <laughs> also, it's always... Always the white duck on white background. And uh -huh. then on the other side it is... A very fitting duck being chased by a giant die. Nightmare duck. <laughs> he looks very distressed. <laughs> yes. I like I like our ducks. <laughs> this is quack quack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's almost usually. I, I'm pretty sure Psyduck usually tries to roll out of the way. Uh, no, but, but he's time. he's very he's, sporty. Thank now, you for the duck. <laughs> most welcome. Buddy. Now, now let's take a look at yeah. this thing. Uh, I'm quickly gonna tell you folks what's gonna come up next week. So next week is the last Gamers Couch for this year. Hence, we are going to have our 2016 review, and not a game that we're gonna. Uh, present and uh, then we're back next year so uh yeah rip 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 it is a book <gasps> you're gonna read oh no huh we haven't had this yet it is i know obviously for all you you german-speaking english guys uh, ken follett's uh, a book die säulen der erde Pillars uh, of the Earth. Die Säulen der Erde uh, from Cosmos. And uh, I've heard good things about this. And we, I think we're thinking about picking it up. But then we never did for some, some reason. And then, The reason is so <laughs> that it's in your advent calendar now. And then I've, I've seen there's, I think there's even expansions out there. And every time something like that comes up, it's like, um, shall we? Ah, that was the game we wanted to pick up. And then mm -hmm. we forgot again. Mm-hmm. I remember this time around. I'm I'm interested. So yeah, oh, it has is... the Deutsche Spielepreis 2007. And this says Glückspilze only five bars. So Cosmos has these yeah. little uh, bars for what was this game made? It's like yeah. the, for the strategist, for the for the guy who likes to make decisions, or for the guy who likes to look at pretty pictures, and then for the, the person who is really lucky. And uh, the person's really lucky rating is lower than all the others, so I'm in immediately drawn to this game, because that is kind of what I'm looking forward to. Also, uh, illustration was by uh, Michael Menzer, which if you're taking a look at the board and you've seen Andor, you, I think, immediately recognize this. So. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's the thing. We Thank have you. to play it. You're most welcome. Only one more box, honey, and then it's Christmas. Oh no, only one more box and then it's more boxes. Uh, no, that's not how it works. Not here. More boxes? Big boxes? Giant boxes. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. <laughs> that's the... No? No. All right, folks. It's that's Christmas that. movie time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't watch this now. We're going to go food shopping now. But later. And prepare the food for tomorrow yeah, for the game let, group. We let you off. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, join us again next week. Next week. <laughs> well, See what we think about 2016 when it comes to board gaming.
watch us talk about stuff that may or may not be interesting. And I say, maybe have a glass of Glühwein with it with a video. I forgot recording. how what the English word for Glühwein is. I I knew um, this. Old wine. Yes. Uh, so get drunk. Don't beat up your family. Do the Christmas thing uh, and come back next week. <laughs> Fun <Bye>. folks. <laughs> See you then. Maybe play a game. Not only maybe. Do it. Do it now. <laughs>